Hi everybody. Before you watch this video, make sure that you watched the video where I explained who Georgia O'Keeffe is. That's the artist that we're learning about. We looked at all of her flowers and now it's time to do our own flowers for our art project. So in your art folder, you need the one that says thick paper. It starts with the letter T. Okay, so make sure you have the thick paper, take it out. If you use the thin paper that's for printers, um, we're gonna use watercolor paints and the water is gonna make it kind of soggy and yucky. This paper is gonna be too big. Sometimes it's hard to paint a whole giant paper. So what we're gonna do is fold it in half. We're only gonna use half of it. So I fold it in half and that helps me get a straight line and then I'm gonna cut it in half. Okay, if it's a little crooked, it's okay. And then save the other half of paper because maybe we'll use it later. Put it right back, make sure you put it on the side for thick paper that starts with the letter T. Okie dokie, so I'm all ready to start my flower. Now, in Seesaw, when you're doing this, when this video is over, keep clicking because there's a whole bunch of pictures of flowers. You are picking one flower. What if I see six flowers on Seesaw? Well. You're picking one flower, one, 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 one flower, okay? And remember how Georgia O'Keeffe did not do the whole plant. She didn't do, if this was a flower and there's the long stem and the beautiful flower at the top and the leaves and the grass next to it, she didn't do that. She just took the big flower, the colorful part, part of the flower, and she made it so big that it did, it did not even fit in her painting. So we're gonna zoom in super close to our flowers, okay? All right, hang on one second. Okay, so I have my paper and I'm looking at the seesaw slideshow and I'm gonna pick this flower, okay? Now I don't want it to be blue, I'm gonna change it. I think I'm gonna make it red or pink or something, okay? Um, you can change the color, but I'm gonna use this for my idea. I'm gonna zoom in so close that I can't even fit the flowers on my paper. So here we go. I'm going to start with, oops. I'm going to start with the middle part of the flower. Let me see if I can, let's see. Okay, I'm going to start with the middle part of the flower and it's kind of like this. And I'm just going to try my best because I know this is tricky. And around it sort of goes like this. I'm not drawing a lot with pencil because we're gonna use crayons really soon. And then the petals of the flower are so big. They are gonna go right off the edge of my paper. Look at how big I'm making this. Right off the edge. Boop, 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 and boop. So there's my flower drawing, super duper big. Now, the next thing we're gonna use is crayons. And I said I didn't want to do blue, but I am going to still make the middle part yellow. Whoopsie, I dump all my crayons. I think I'm going to use orange and yellow for the middle. Now I'm not going to color everything in because later I'm going to use some watercolor paints too. But when I look at my picture really close, there's a lot of little lines on here. So I'm going to do some little stripies on mine. Maybe I'll do an orange dot. So we're just thinking, what are some of the textures? So I'll do orange and yellow. And anytime I draw something with pencil, we want to draw on top of that pencil with crayon so we hide it. And then these were kind of orange and yellow. So I'm going to draw on top of this pencil line. Okay, so I just traced on top of all my pencil lines with color. But now I think I'm going to put some extra texture. Sometimes inside the uh, petals of my flower, there might be some extra lines. So I'm going to add some. And I'm gonna do this purpley color and I think I'm gonna do some pink stripies would be fun. And I'm gonna do this to all the flower petals. And I think this is empty space. There's no flower here, it's just the background. So I'm just gonna color that in with a color that's very different. So maybe I'll color that green. No, I think I'm gonna do blue. All this is gonna be blue. Let me pause the video. Okay, so I finished adding color. I made all of the background where there is no flower a very different color. 
And then I added some details on my flower petals with crayon and I pressed nice and hard. Now for the next step, we're gonna use our watercolor paints. Okay, and don't forget we need water. Whoopsie, I wanna move my computer out of the way when I have my water because that would be a sad day if I spilled water on my computer. Okay, so here's my water. Remember I said just something from your kitchen, not tall and skinny. If it's tall and skinny, it falls over really easily. So that's why I picked a short, fat container. And then here's my paints. Okay, now if you don't have watercolor paints, for the next part of this project, you could use marker instead. So for example, if you don't have watercolor, you could just add detail with marker. And you can kind of go right on top of the crayon and some of the crayon will still show up, okay? That's if you don't have, if you don't have watercolors, okay? You can use marker. And you can also actually turn marker into watercolor, get, if you have a paintbrush, you can turn this into watercolor. You can actually put some water right on top of the markers and you can kind of paint, turn, make it look like paint. Okay, but most of my friends should have their watercolor paints by now. Okay, your teacher has them at school. So when I paint, I get my brush wet, wipe it a little bit. The very first time I dip in the color, I, I might need a little extra water to get it started. There we go. And then I can just paint. And usually we can see some of the crayon through the paint. Now I'm painting with red because I don't have a pink, but you know what I think would be fun? I'm gonna rinse my brush and yellow is, uh, orange is next to red on the color wheel. So I'm gonna get some orange and I'm gonna put it right next to my red and let them mix together a little bit. And that's kind of cool looking. All right, so I'm gonna do that with all of my flower petals. I'm gonna do red near the top. Now you guys can do your own color. You are the artist. You decide what color you're gonna use. Have fun and be creative, okay? So I'm gonna do red, and then I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna try some orange next to the red. And you know what? Way at the end of the petal, I might even rinse it again. Let me see what happens if I add a little yellow next to it, because that's kind of fun. Oh, that's really cool looking. All right, let me finish painting that. Okay, so I finished painting all of that and now I'm gonna paint the inside. So I think I wanna use yellow on the inside. Now remember, this is watercolor paint. So we need water to make the paint work, but we're not, sometimes I see friends trying to scoop paint out of here. You don't do that. Your paintbrush is gonna basically just be like a bunch of, I can't show you the paintbrush. It's not zooming in on it. Well, anyway, you just want a bunch of water on here and a little bit of paint, okay? So I keep dipping in. When my paintbrush gets dry, do I keep scrubbing it to try to get more color? No, when I'm running out of color, if I just dip back in, it's only paint in there. You need to have some water. So get your brush wet, wipe it once, and then there's water on my brush plus the paint in here. That is how we get our color. So you're not scooping it. Okay, so there's my middle. I think I want the very middle to be a little bit more orangey. So I'm gonna add, when I put wet paint on wet paint, it kind of smushes together. And that's okay. It's kind of fun. All right, and my picture is all finished. Make sure you send me a picture of yours when it's finished. Have fun.